Happy Friday, Pat. A wet and rainy Friday, that is sure. Hello, Rick. Yep, you got that right. It's, uh, you know, Christmas can always bring some interesting weather in, in Phoenix. We got rain. Yeah, sometimes we're outside barbecuing, but we are ready for the holidays. I need to get people caught up today, so I hope everybody's got their Christmas shopping all done. Or it's was like a Super Saturday, I think they call it. So, <laughs> yeah, it's one of those. It's one of these time frames where I try to really avoid these crowds. <laughs> you know, I used to like going in. Well, um, God, I little personal story here. I I always ended up working Christmas Eve. You know, because I was in the the footage. Yep. And uh, and you know they're. You stayed pretty busy, and uh, one time I took Christmas Eve off, and the honeydew list that I got stuck with at home and the amount of running around I did, I said, you know, I'm not going to take Christmas Eve off any. <laughs> it's it's easier on just to go to the office. Went right in L.A., probably headed your way. Good afternoon, Stephanie. Yes, and I checked the radar earlier. So let's got any other last week. Pretty cool. Yeah, it was great. Let's tee up what we're, what we're, our intentions are today because we're, we're going to get beat up a little bit, me. Yeah. But here, um, I, you know, there's a lot of YouTubers out there that are just, the crash is coming, doom and gloom, wild projections. And some of them have been, like one guy has a website that's been out there for five years saying, you know, the crash is coming. It's called housing bubble, something like that, housing market bubble. And, and then we've got, a, you know, a couple of these guys that you all know, because um, I could see that people at View My Out channel also view this channel. And then one of these guys, Nick, he was even on Fox Business News and MSNBC as a real estate expert. Now he's on his second, second. year, if not his third year of predicting another 30% decline. And you know, we get on MSNBC or, you know, Fox Business News, I wonder what the, now we just don't know the right people. But I'm, I'm going to. I'm going to tee this one up here. Here's a, this was posted, and this is a courtesy of a YouTuber named John Schwartz, who was just picking this guy apart, and uh, he'll go through what he says, and he pulls up charts to show that he's off. But I want to show you his prediction here from June 11th. The amount of buyers is down. The amount of new construction is way up. So these builders are now building... You know what? I messed up on that. Let me see what I can do. He, uh, the very previous ad here. Out of new. You have to follow the money. Builders are in business to maximize. Anyway, I won't. I somehow I missed that one. But he, he said that we are at the tip of the market. And he said, I am predicting from this day forward. We're going to go down at least 30%. And uh, and we haven't even gone, they've, they've shot straight up since then. We yeah. haven't even gone down to the level where he was at, let alone 36% below that. Okay, I'm just going to say something. Go back to that picture. I'm just going to be something smart alecky. That guy was born in like 2010. Well, that's not the guy that's talking. This is it here, Nick. Well, yeah, he was born in 2009. Yeah. You know, during it, you know, <laughs> these guys have been in row probably. They were like probably six years old, five years old. Well, I'm just, I'm just saying it. He's a smart guy. Couldn't be, you know, I don't know. Hard to tell. But the other comment that was made too along this was consumer debt. And the yeah. consumer debt was is way out of whack. And it is considerably yeah. higher. But I think what can also be pointed out is, and the reason I'm showing you this is when a statistic is point it out to you, do some digging and say, okay, well, what else could it mean? And when I looked at the consumer debt, I pulled up consumer debt service payments as a percentage of personal mm -hmm. income. Now, that doesn't look way out of whack to me. No. So there is consumer debt chart goes way up like this, but the debt according to your income, disposable income, is not off the charts. So that uh, that doesn't make things fall off the face of the earth. Now, I hope this one works. Let me try it here for a sec. Okay. So now this is another guy. This is um, Scott Walters. Yes, there is an army rooting for the crash. I get it. 
There's a lot of yeah. people out there. I mean, I, you know, there's no denying that. Um, so, but no, check, check this one out. You're hearing my words, but you don't understand the magnitude of what that would look like if or when it plays out. So I'd be ultra careful right now if I was starting to think, well, Scott, you know, they're going to cut rates and people are going to get excited about real estate again. It's going to stimulate the markets. I don't believe I would get that excited. In fact, there's a lot of information that would say cutting the rates is what what's going to happen. After that, it's actually going to send us in to an unemployment spiral. So what are you going to Think of that, that. That's not it, it. Those those events are flip flop. So yeah, and so cutting rates has cutting rates ever sent us in to higher unemployment? No, if there's other, you know, the only reason you're going to cut rates if there is high, you know, it's that you got to reverse those events. Well, that's what we're seeing here. This is uh, prime loan rate changes, right now. Yeah, the 1980s that was way out of whack, but. If you look here, um, this is the prime loan rate changes. Okay, so let's just pick one year here. Let's go to 2000. They came down, right? Yeah. And here's the recession, which is the gray area. But then you look at unemployment. So let's just go to the year. Uh, let's go to, they started cutting rates here on February 1st, 2001. So let me go to my unemployment chart. Let me go to 2001. February 1st, there, right there. Does that look like unemployment is spiking to you? Not, re not really, no, no. So it's, it, their unemployment does go up during a recession. Rates start coming down during a recession. And then employment starts, employment uh, starts improving. So inflation. Go back to that last right? Go back to the federal rate chart again. Now look at that last gray area there. Great, um, great. Not back there. One more, right there. Now what year is that? I can't see. Is that two seven? Two thousand eight. All right. I want you to realize this is just something I, I noticed. Actually, this is the chart that I was going to bring up. You know, I'm, I'm going to kind of digress real quick here. Going to subprime mortgage rates. Look at the look at the rise in. The, look at that gray area that you were just on. Put your arrow there. They go just the bottom, just a couple of years, the bottom or to left, the bottom, right? What year is this right here? You know, go keep going to the bottom, more the other bottom right there. That's what, 2005, 2006? 2004. Uh, people have to realize I lived through this 2003, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I, I lived through that. I saw it. I was in the game entirely in that period. Look at the rise in rates. That's just now. This is just the prime rate, right? It went yeah. from what was that right there to the top about three, four, four years. Two five. Hmm? This says two thousand four, four point two five. What was the top? What was the top a couple years later? Eight point two five. That is when lenders had nothing but if you had subprime credit five eighty five, you know five ninety five to score five fifty six hundred. Lenders were selling. What they call basically two a, a two year arm adjustable two year arm three year basically two year uh, low thirty year fixed thirty years two years is fixed but then it was adjustable. You look at those. You look at that rate chart. Go back to that if you don't mind. That area. That's that whole area right there. Goes to fixate on that area again. That is when we got in trouble with the subprime market. We had. Interest rates go from, you know, people were realizing my rates can go from 4 to 8% or 9%. That's why we saw such, you know, melee in the in the mortgage real estate market. That's why we saw such a big crack. Is what so we, yeah, people got their loans here. Yep. Yep. They they reset. They reset right. there. And then they did that. They had no, because back when, in the bottom circle, and I'm just telling you just in general. I'm not going to give any specific numbers, but I just saw it. I saw the real game. People were buying 100% homes, 100%, no money down, 580 FICO score, stated income. And they were set at 4, 4.5, 5%. 5%. Two years later, three years later, which would take you into the 07, 08, 09 era, they're like, huh. my, my loan's resetting. I've got no, I got no equity. 
I am letting the house go. We've got a complete, people have to realize we have, I mean, I'm just being uh, just straight up honest. We've got a completely different scenario right now. Uh, atmosphere, uh, environment. We've got people that, like you said, go back in this story. I'm going to sound like until I'm, you know, repeat myself, 36, 37 million people at four, four and a half, five percent locked in for 30 years. They're not going to see the rate go from four to eight, you know, three to five or three to yeah, eight, you know, so. Let me ask you this, which is a common question that we get out there from people all the time or comments that I see. We've got a nasty recession coming and it's going to force people to sell their homes. What say you? You know what? What say me? Basically, yeah, there will be some people. Don't get me wrong. There will be people that are stuck in that. Uh, we do need the housing supply. Um, is it going to be a mass it's totally different than 07, 08. Like I said, people are, that's a problem. People are stuck comparing we're going to see a crash because they saw 07, 08, 09. They saw the 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 monster one time. They think the monster is going to come again. You're comp- comparing two different environments. Yeah, if they lose their job, yeah, okay. You got bought a house, you know, five, six, seven, eight years ago. You got $150,000, $250,000 equity. Yeah, you might, there's probably going to be people that will have to sell. I mean, the problem is, Rick, what you and I are seeing is these people that go from one, you got one people on one extreme saying, we're going to see massive layoffs or this. Well, let's try to take things down the middle and say, yeah, I'm going to be honest. There will be people that lose their jobs, but they might have $150,000, $200,000, $300,000 equity. Now, for one, they're probably going to try to maybe bring maybe bring a renter in. Um, they got an extra bedroom. Um, they might have a little out about this. Every recession has seen home prices come down. Every re- no, it hasn't. This is the average sales price right yeah. here, 1970, 27,100, all of those days. Um, that doesn't look like it went down, went down by 800 bucks. So here's 1974, the average house, 38,000. These gray, these gray lines here, those are recessions. Those are recessions, okay? So look at the section in 0809. Yeah, that was that was the that was the crash. Yeah, that's what we were just talking about. Now, yeah, you saw that you look at the blip on that chart, you know. So um, you know, going back to if people lose their jobs, you know, if you got 150, 200, 200 thousand dollars equity, I, I'm just people are gonna get creative. They're either gonna borrow money from a relative for maybe a year, say, hey, um, I'll I'm just throwing this stuff out, but Hey, I've got equity in my house. You could put a second, you know, we'll put a silent uh, second on my house for the 20000 that you just loaned me. I've got to, you know, people get creative. You get that much money, maybe they will sell. But um, I just don't see this massive event that's going to be, uh, in, at least an employment goal from 3.8, 3, 3.7, 3.8 to 4.1. I just don't think those are, that. my opinion. But you know what? I can give my opinion just like all these other uh, Google knuckleheads are on YouTube or, you know, YouTube, like you just showed, you know, they're, they have just as much credibility as I do, or my, I, we, I think we got more because we actually do still state the facts, but I just don't see it. I've been doing well, it. We, boots on the ground once again in Phoenix showing how much building is going on in this area and how we're overbuilding. Here's my question. Did you ask anybody what the months of supply is for new construction? Did you talk to anybody about their sales rate in the development that you went into? Yeah. Did you address how many people are moving to the area? Now, he could find some statistics to go, yeah, there's going to be some downward pricing pressure on new homes. But flying the drone over a neighborhood and showing you that there's a lot of construction doesn't mean anything. As you can see in the ticker below, a lot of what you're looking at is multifamily. There's a lot of construction going on for apartments and rents are coming down they are coming down very much they finally just stopped going up now speaking of that the other comment that's made on a video today was it today or yesterday was saying that the eviction number of evictions in maricopa county are higher than anywhere in the country and set a new record now that part is true but what is ignored is the overall eviction rate in Maricopa County. Because we have a lot more people living here than we did. And there were a lot of people that got caught up and, you know, lost their jobs. And, and they, the moratorium happened right here. So our eviction rate was 
before, you know, because you couldn't get anybody. So now that you can, we're up to 4.2. Well, look, 4.2 is not that out of whack, is it? No. No. The number of evictions is, it's way up here, but you always have to look at the percentages. Like affordability, just how bad, you know, if you look at affordability chart and it's showing you the affordability of income versus the price of the house, that's much different than saying the income versus the payment for the house. Now, recently, getting up to 8%, affordability is way out of whack. It wasn't wasn't good. Um, so now the other thing that come out is these institutional Wall Street investors have bought everything and they want us all to be renters. Okay, how big is that number? So I looked it up. Single family construction right here for mega investors. This is for the country, 445,000 homes. Smaller investor, 19,000 homes. Now, I don't know what that is as a percentage, but 445,000, when normally we have three to four million listings in the country, that's not a mover and a shaker. That's not going to change things no. too much. I mean, how many millions of homes out there? I think I saw a number. Um, I think the, the overall national number, it was something like 144 million, something like that. I think I saw it. Yeah. Now, here's another one here, because this this one is what is baffling everybody. Good afternoon, Keenan. Good to have you back. Sales per year. Okay, look into the house. Yes. Look how bleak this is. I mean, this is as low as it's ever been. And even in my seven-day moving average, you can see here that we're down to like 2,000, but it's, it's Christmas week, so it doesn't count. But yeah, this is how low we've been trending. Now, if, if you're talking about crashes, how come we're not crashing when sales are this bleak, Pat? Yeah, I know. Well, remember, we, we were talking about the fact that... Um, you know, we've been through, what were we just talking about? Uh, kind of, you know, my memory is about as good as... Uh, well, we were talking about, you know, if we'd have told you the oh, interest yeah. rates are going to go from 3% to 8%. Yeah, but what would, you you out? what would happen? If you, going back two years ago, I would love to ask the number of people, right? I mean, we're talking about that. Right now, rates are at 3 Let's go back in history. Rates are at 3% today. But if we told you next two years, rates are going to hit, hit 8%. I'd love to see what people's responses were. Well, we did go down in fairness 17%. Yeah, but it did turn it did turn back around. So yeah. we didn't crash 30%. Sorry, Nick. Didn't happen. Um that's what I'd say. We saw softening. We saw, you know, we're we're gonna see softening, but uh once again, it was interesting to think about you go back on the history of what we have seen some softening, we've seen some pullback, but I, I I just don't see the crash that everybody's waiting for. Well, I have a uh, um, a newsletter called The Blueprint that I get, and they're kind of putting out an end-of-the-year blip here that, you know, cause this is prediction season, right? So, yeah. There's still no, no housing bubble in 2024. We know some people out there truly believe there's a housing bubble. Well, we're going to burst their bubble. We absolutely don't believe it and find even the suggestion ridiculous utterly implausible. Yes, we would likely see continued price growth and higher than pandemic mortgage rates, but that's all we're going to see. And mortgage rates will not drop quickly. Listing activity will rise modestly. Home prices will rise, not much. Home markets, home values and markets that crash will recover. New construction will gain share. Housing affordability, unfortunately, remain about the same. And uh, foreclosures have Activity won't impact the market. I kind of gl glossed over this. U.S. government will need to continue taking housing seriously. Please keep your hands out of it. Um, sales will rise, but still remain slow. The yeah. Ellen here says during the housing downturn, will buyers confront stricter loan requirements and compete cash flush investors aiming to seize inventory at lower prices? That's only if we see a huge increase in inventory. Right now, I mean. No, well, I mean, I'll just catch up real quick. I mean, yeah. you're in a housing downturn. Typically, I mean, you see restrictions on lending when you get craziness. Uh, at a housing downturn, I'm just kind of just 
speak in general terms that, you know, they typically will loosen up, you know, requirements to get grease the wheel. I yeah. mean, to give you a perfect example, when things got crazy the last year and a half, two years, Eddie May, Freddie Mac, what did they do? They put a, a low level pricing adjustment on second homes um, that were just absolutely bonkers. I mean, you know, that it's, yeah, yeah, had yeah. two and a half, you know, we talked about that a little over a year ago. You know, when they, or actually, when was it? This Yeah, this year? Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, this year, where they put the LLP, you know, low-level pricing adjustments, that's what LLPA stands for, is different adjustments for credit score, loan to value. You know, if you look at a chart, you know, it's half a point, three quarters of a point, point, but they're anywhere from point and a half to four points on a second home. Because typically, second homes back in the day, you could buy a, the pricing interest rates for Primary and second homes are basically the same. But now Freddie Mac, Freddie Manny came in and said, no. So that put it that put that put a uh, dagger in the second home uh you know purchasing for sure. Yeah, that's I say leave it alone. I think, you know, looking at January, I don't see buyer activity just busting through the gates. I like that I like see, I, I like that overall. Yeah, I, I see listings going up because simply because they always do. Yeah, but I don't see, and I'll give you an example. We've got a great subscriber here, and I talked to her yesterday, and she said, you know, we've got this house. Um, it's paid off. Uh, we'd like to downsize. Um, you know, want to get a single level. We don't know when. And we don't think we're going to be in a hurry. Now, if somebody sells a house to downsize, that lists the house, then in doubt, that doesn't increase inventory because they're no. trading one house for another. So. It only is going to increase inventory if somebody has to sell and move um, or they've walked away from the house. Now, foreclosures, not exist, not even a, not even smelling a foreclosure. But you shared a chart with me earlier, Pat, about, was it the number of people that are credit ready to buy a house? Yeah. This was kind of interesting, too. This is, you know, this is a, uh, let's see, hopefully I can, well, uh, you know, oh, yeah, right here. Give me one second here. This is kind of young. I was um I was taking my year end uh, continuing education class and there was a lady at Freddie from Freddie Mac and they had a segment on there from Freddie Mac and they kind of spewed she spewed their programs, you know Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae they are coming out with some new interesting programs home ready they're giving like a five thousand dollar credit to first time loan buyers in certain areas so I applaud them for doing that you know they are trying to delve into trying to help people but this was pretty interesting that I never really in twenty three years never really kind of classified people like this, which is kind of interesting. He, he, she said, mortgage ready, near mortgage ready, not currently mortgage ready. <laughs> so I kind of like the class. I mean, just kind of putting them in buckets. Like, hey, are we, are we ready? And they said, this is an interesting chart. She said, and this is kind of what I'm talking about, the, you know, the, the, that shadow buyer demand. She said, there's 41 million mortgage ready in the overall population. And there's 13.3 million near mortgage ready. So I, I would presume that's people, not households. <laughs> yeah. Well, wow. but you still look at it. 41 million. Let's say four people. 10 million. You know, let's just say 10 million households. You know, just for giggles. Um, this is what I'm talking about. There's still the, the millennials. The the that, that group of uh, people that are looking to buy the, the 25, 28, 30, 35 year old, you know, yeah, they haven't been running down, knocking down the doors the last six, seven, eight months because that interest rate is seven and a half to eight percent. But then once again, they're building, they're building that powder. And um, unfortunately, I mean, that's kind of what is behind my theory is that if rates, you know, there's that one study done that said 70 percent of the people are waiting for rates to get to five and a half before they buy. Yeah. You know, so I, I just, you know, not the sharpest tool in the shed, but I see all the data talking to people. You know, it just, it just, it, it tells me that there is something behind all these. There, You can't refute these numbers. I'm sorry. Well, one number that's out there is floating around is that there are 14 million vacant homes in this country. Yeah. You know, not every home is livable. <laughs> yeah. And I, I saw a video where the guy was kind of, Picking on Nick. Well, not kind of. I mean, he was picking on Nick. And, and, but he said, well, let's do a search. Go to Zillow. And he goes, and search Baltimore. 
lowest price to highest price. And there were homes for sale out there for $5. Yeah. $15, $20. He goes, there's there's the majority of your vacant. They're vacant because nobody wants them. And the vacant homes are in towns where nobody wants to move to. So there isn't a high vacancy rate in places like Phoenix, Los Angeles, Seattle, Denver. But there are areas where, you know, it's 20 below that maybe they got a lot of vacancy rates, uh, high taxation, a lot of vacancy rates. So it's not a solid number across the country. It says, oh, here they go. It says shadow inventory is going to show up. I talked about rent earlier. Here's what's going on. We're sitting here at, at uh, a buck 32 uh, per square foot. But you can see that it's flat lined. It really hasn't dropped that much. So, mm -hmm. uh, But boy, you don't have to drive around very long to see just how many units are coming on board. And especially the build to rent communities. But I mean, there's huge, huge complexes being built all over the valley. You just name the area. Santan, when it comes to new construction, they're still expanding like crazy. They're, I would probably say that they're overbuilding out in Santan. That, you mean talk about multifamily? No, it's a single family as well. Okay. I think, and, and I can kind of back that up with the, uh, you know, Crawford Market Index by city, if I hold this up here, and because you look at Phoenix here, you know, we're down almost to like last year, but you know, if I go to, uh, it's going to have to be Queen Creek because they blend Santana with Queen yeah. Creek. You can see that they're down at 73.8 for, for an index. So that's, you know, that's a lot of homes being built down there. You compare that to Chandler, which is doing quite well, and there isn't a whole lot of new construction going out of Chandler because there's a lot of land, build up of land there. Their yeah. their CMI is 110. Yeah. Their, the Crawford Market Index supply versus demand is only updated once a month. And as I've pointed out, they're they're touching right now. Um, but they haven't crossed. Supply has not exceeded demand yet. So there's when if that happens, then yes, there is downward pricing so I'm going to be very interesting to see what what shows up in the first, second week of January because just my simple little calculations here on my seven-day moving average shows me that those two lines are not getting closer on the, on the index because we're down to like 80% here where we're about 65. So mm -hmm. the gap's closing between new listings and contracts. So, so I don't expect those numbers to cross next month. Uh, Danilo has got another question here. How does the construction of rental units providing more housing options for people typically impact property values in the area? It depends. It, I mean, look, if you got a house and they built, you know, 500 units right across the street from you, you're not going to like it. It's going to hurt your value a little bit. It's impossible to say how much. Yeah. Um, I think if you're across the street, one of these large rent-owned communities, you know, you probably... People like stability, like the neighbors to be the same neighbors for a while. So, uh, you know, it's it, it does have an effect, but it it's a street by street thing. Um, do you think rental rates on condos from mom pop landlords will go down? And what about apartment rentals? Well, I I do have a condo for sale from an investor in California, and he it's in Central Phoenix and. He said as of late, he's been having a hard time finding good tenants or even any tenants. Um, so he's trying to sell it now. And if it doesn't sell, he'll put it on the renter. And he paid cash for it, so he's not hurting as far as cash flow. Um, I think the rate rates will come down just because of excess supply. So the thing to look for, you got an apartment complex in your neighborhood, and as soon as they put that sign out, for instance, first month is free, then you know rates have declined. Yeah. Well, you know, they decline, but you know, which is all good thing is they're moderating. Um, yeah. Let's talk about rates real quick here. Jump in before we, um, we haven't, we haven't really talked about them. Obviously we're seeing a nice trend down where these are rates coming back 19th and 20th, which I said, I said going back obviously a week or two that I thought we saw a top and we've seen a nice trend downward right here. And, um, I'm looking at the overall environment and the landscape and it just 
feels as though, once again, we've kind of shifted. The shift is on now. Are rates going to keep trending lower? We're probably going to fight our way lower eventually, but it's going to be a little bit given back, you know, give and take every week. You know, you can have one week where the feds are coming out with this. and But I really do think the last trend that we've seen the last since the beginning of 2022, because we've been in this upward trend with rates, um, you know, let's see here, looking back here, this is uh, right here. This has been the this has been the trend since the beginning of 2022, basically up. You know, we saw a pause, then we saw it up. I, I and now this is right here as well. We saw the Feds kind of saying, "Okay, we're gonna pull back. We're gonna." Yeah, I think there has been a shift. It's gonna be a while before rates come down. I hope they don't come down quickly. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I will just give you a PSA warning to people out there looking to you know bought a home in the last six, seven, eight, nine, ten months. I'm seeing on my end now. You're gonna see a bunch of mortgage guys come out. And I'm seeing it already. Like, hey, you bought, you got an interest rate of seven, seven eighths. We can refi you at six and seven eighths. Take the old bull versus the young bull philosophy. Just let the trend kind of run a little bit because I'm seeing a lot of people now and a lot of mortgage guys say, oh, I can refinance this guy and save him $150. So why don't you wait a little bit? Maybe you can save him $350. You know, get a better rate. Let, let the rates run their course. I think we have kind of seen the trend turn. My, just my opinion, what it's worth. But I think we have been in this uptrend once again for the last two years. And it's been a, a hellacious uptrend. I think we are going to see relief because just based on the fact that things just seem to be moderating. We don't have this screaming fireball in the room right now. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, but I think one thing that we've learned since 2020 is we can't predict anything. No. No, <laughs> and so if you're I, I, slash, I mean, I, I'm glad. I, I'm glad that's your hobby. I'm glad you're making money on YouTube. But you know, give me a break. Been seeing crash for over two years now. Uh, if you're predicting robust growth, I'll say the same thing to you. You don't know. All you can do is watch. I mean, if we knew, I'd be a billionaire. And when when we had that two weeks stay at home, flatten the curve, and businesses were shut down, I said this. This is going to be ugly, ugly. This is terrible. Who would have thought that the level of government intervention and spending that showed up would have showed up? Who would have thought that we got checks or that there'd be such a thing as rental moratoriums where you didn't have to pay your rent and you could save up to buy a house? I mean, yeah, you know, they, they, they printed money at an unprecedented scale and we're trying to unwind from this. Well, there's no history at the scale of which we've done this. So- you know, now there's talk, well, we're going to have a soft landing. Well, we might not, you know, nobody knows. So I just caution people that, you know, when you see stats, you know, dig into them a little bit. You know, like the one I showed you on, on evictions. Yeah. The number's higher, but the percentage is not. So there's, there's always something, you know, there's always some devil in the details. And when you're just shouting negativity all the time, You'll get a lot of people show up like Grant Cardone. You know him? Eh, he's made it on Fox News. I mean, he made great national news because he said there's a crash commercial real estate coming that's going to be unlike anything he's ever seen in his lifetime. And it's going to be in multifamily and it's going to be in commercial. Well, do you think he would have been on TV if he just said, next year looks like a good year? Yeah. No doubt. No doubt. You're not lighting a fire. <clears throat> My thumbnail has flames on purpose. You watch. This will probably do well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a little bit of a test. Yeah. Well, like you said, I'm going to go back to that PSA with rates. I just want people to just, you know, like you said, um, I'm just starting to see it. I said, I just, I'm going to repeat myself from a minute ago, but um, I'm seeing people just, uh, you're going to get, get a lot of flyers. You're going to get a lot of, I tell you, these fault, you're going to get, hammered with phone calls from mortgage people. Hey, I could do this for you. I could do that for you. Just, you know, you're, you're going to have a bunch of snakes coming out of the woodwork and just be careful. That's all. And I, like you said, let the trend run. I mean, I think we're in a different trend right now that broke October 19th, 20th. And, um, it's gonna You're going to see some fits and starts, you know, maybe a week or two of race kind of skirt up a little bit. It just feels like eventually we will, we will get there, but I hope the hell it, 
is slow and sure, not this quick ram bat. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. It's pretty easy to um, follow along right now, and it's much easier to show homes than it than it was in 2021. I just absolutely hated that. So the, affor the affordability issues definitely come down. I mean, you look at rates. I mean, right now they're at uh, you know on a 400 on a uh, 400. Seventy-five thousand dollar purchase, five percent down. I mean, you know, um, I get off. I can blow this up. I mean, once again, you're looking before you were looking at say, personal uh, total payment with MI was about thirty-four fifty-four. Now you're looking at, um, you know, give or take twenty-nine nine about four hundred fifty dollar difference. Yeah, and, you know, you combine that with if inflation does start moderating eventually with on the food side, the gas side, you know, the whole affordability thing, I think you and I, everybody talks about is uh, homes are not affordable because I think you get only, not only interest rates moving up, you had gas, you had food, you had electricity, you had all that crap moving up at the same time. All of a sudden your, your housing, your, all, everything that was in your budget went up by about $1,500 to $1,800. Yeah. So with rates moderating, they moderated fairly quickly. I mean, it's pretty impressive to see that your payment went down by four hundred fifty dollars in about a month, month and a half. Yeah. That's oh, that's the power of interest rates versus we talk about how people say, can you get a lower interest rate or do you want the, the price of the house reduced by ten grand? The rate, a, a better rate, is definitely the better way to go. Yeah, I think so. Um, I think um, as we look. Going into next year, like I've said, um, secondly, maybe January will tell us, uh, will give us an indication of a trend. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what you want to see. You know, our, our, if listings go up, will the sales follow? That's the real question that's out there right now. We're, we're at 2,100 to 2,400 units every seven days contract. Will that budge? Will that go up? If inventory goes up, like it always does January, and that stays put, then, well, you know, then we're not going to see an increase in price. We're not going to see a crash, but we're not going to see an increase. So we always have the highest number of listings come on in January and the highest number of price reductions of the year show up in February because people are optimistic at first of the year. They put the house on, they got elected work. and they earned Versus last year, everybody ran to get their house on the market when the rates went up, and then when they couldn't sell it, they just... They didn't reduce the price. They just took them off. Well, okay. I'll stay home. <laughs> well, Pat, thank you for joining me again. And, and everybody, please have a safe and Merry Christmas. Uh, we, uh, we don't know if we have another show next week, but if we don't, it's going to be hit. You know, you said hit and miss maybe. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think, well, I, I'm pretty sure we'll have something on Friday. Okay. Well, yeah. All right. I've a couple other videos being sprinkled out there here. Um, I know last year we kind of bored everybody with a one-year recap. We won't do that to you this year because <laughs> you know what's going on. You see it. So we'll we just, bore them anyway. We bore them. Yeah, anyway. there'll, there'll be some news out there somewhere that we can chatter about. So everybody have a great weekend. Yeah, and, uh, and I hope your uh, Christmas shopping is done. Uh, don't be like uh, I used to be and end up at the mall on Christmas Eve. Although, you know what? That was kind of fun just sitting and watch people rap. You know, you, yeah, you can watch this. I tell you what, the gift cards are a bachelor's best friend. Yeah. <laughs> There's a gift card scam going on. I mean, I'm out there right now, so be careful. So, All right, yeah. All right buddy. Take care, everybody. Later. Take care. Wow.